One of the most time-consuming tasks that my team faces at work is external market research. The challenge is that you can't just open any one document and understand a competitor. It'd be great if you could just you know, open a 10K and say this is everything, but you need to look at the competitor. You need to look not only at what they say about themselves, which may be biased, you also need to look at what the market is saying about them and how they're positioned in the industry, so you need to understand the industry as well. For any one company, doing this at a you know medium to high level of detail can take an hour and a half, not to mention writing this up and framing it for executives. So hearing about AI agents, which are a newer tool and kind of an expansion on AI chatbots, I wanted to test this to see if I could find a way to get this three hours down significantly since so much of it is really just kind of, you know, researching and writing. So first, what are AI agents? Well, they're virtual assistants, they're powered by artificial intelligence, and they're designed to automate tasks. Why is this different than a regular AI tool? Well, the AI tools we're used to, like ChatGPT, they're just chatbots. We can just kind of talk to them. We have to prompt them. We prompt, we get a response back. We prompt, we get a response back. The difference for AI agents is you can give them goals and an initial prompt, and they will go off and they will run multiple steps in a sequence. They can analyze data. They can give you insights. They can complete workflows independently. Think about it if you're aware of things like robotic process automation or even Excel macros where they'll go off and run steps. That's what an AI agent's doing. It's taking the natural language and chat ability of things like ChatGPT, and it's using it to go off on your computer and run multiple steps. And this is going to help you with repetitive tasks. It'll save time. It'll reduce manual errors because it's going to do it all for you. It's a huge evolution from the chatbots to the fact that it can go off and run its own systems for you. How do they work? Well, you start with a user-defined goal or task. Unlike a chatting where you just give them a simple prompt and they come back, you're going to give them an actual goal to accomplish, which has multiple steps. You're going to break this down into those smaller actionable steps for it, and it's going to go off and it's going to gather and run those steps autonomously. Usually we're going to be doing this with things like financial data analysis, like, hey, here's the data. You can sell to clean the data, go off and analyze the data, come back and even maybe chart the data. And then you can use feedback loops to refine the results and optimize this. Some tips and tricks for working with AI agents. You want to clearly define goals for the agent to avoid ambiguity. Just like a regular chatbot, ambiguity is nobody's friend here. You need to give it clean and structured data for the most accurate results. It can do some cleaning and transformation of your data, but a purely unstructured data set's just not going to work at this point. You need to test your outputs for quality, refine the prompts as you need it. This isn't usually a set it and forget it kind of thing until you've gotten up and running. And then don't forget to leverage the built-in visualization tools. You don't just have to ask it to analyze the data. You can ask it to do the first pass of your visualizations to go right into your reports and presentations. So don't forget about that last piece. Huge time savings. So you can get to Agent GPT either just searching the name in Google, or you can go to agentgpt.reworked, that's reworked without an E, dot AI, agentgpt.reworked.ai. And this is the screen you'll find. Now, to save and deploy your own agent, you'll want to log in. There's a ton of advanced functionality. If you have an open AI account for ChatGPT and you want to connect it, you're able to do that. There's some great tutorials on that that agentgpt provides, so I won't go into that here because we're just going to keep this basic and use the basics to show you what's going on. Now, what we're going to do in this example is we're going to use Agent GPT to do competitor research for us. This is something, and the work we're going to have it do could take two or three hours if you have to physically comb through the 10Ks, the earning releases, market data to come back on a competitor analysis. And you're going to watch this be done in less than a minute. How cool is that? So we're going to name this competitive research. And now let's pretend that we are working for T-Mobile and we want to understand how Verizon and AT&T are doing, how they're positioned and how their financials are doing. So we can kind of come back and say, maybe here's where T-Mobile needs to adjust. So we're going to come to the goal and we'll say, I need your help to provide a summary of competitor performance. First, review the most recent quarterly earnings for Verizon and AT&T. Summarize the key points from earnings for each company, then 
compare their performance to the overall industry. Come back with a SWOT analysis. Only run this process once, otherwise it's just going to keep looping and looping. So we're saying, go find information about Verizon AT&T. Read all that information on Verizon and AT&T, which could be a ton of information. Compare how that's doing versus the telecom market and come back with a SWOT analysis. So essentially, we're asking it to write a full research report on our competitors, do all the research, and come back with it. Let's see what happens. So here it goes. It's adding its tasks. It's running them. Now it's executing. So you'll see it's going out and it's finding all this information for Verizon and AT&T. It's summarizing the key points. So there's Verizon, AT&T, and then there's the SWOT analysis. Look at that. So here's the performance of AT&T and Verizon versus the total industry. We have this fantastic key points from earnings, SWOT analysis. So here's our strengths for Verizon, AT&T. Weaknesses for AT&T, opportunities, threats, just some really fantastic information. All of that provided by reviewing actual information on the internet and giving us a summary of what's happening at both businesses. So you just automated what could be three or four hours of financial statement analysis, of market analysis, and drafting the report. Now, you're going to probably want to go in and do some tweaking out of this, make it you know kind of executive friendly, but this is all the information. If you want additional information, you can then prompt it to go find that. You can tweak your prompt and go back and reiterate this to find the, you know, the best way to do it. But that's all it takes. It's going to go do the multiple steps, whereas something like a chat GPT, a Claude, a Gemini could only do one step and come back to us for prompting. It's going to go do all of that, and it's going to keep reiterating it if you want it to, to find better and better information. You can kind of pull information in from all of those different reports it comes back with and summarize it. How cool is that? At the end of the day, by using an AI agent and its ability to do these multi-step research, development, and writing, we cut down the research time from three hours down to essentially three minutes, which is just crazy. Now, the output back, I would say all of the data it gave me is accurate. You would still want to check that, always check AI outputs, but all the data we got back was accurate and had sources straight to the document for us to check it. But from a you know being ready for executive standpoint, I'd say it was about 80% complete. So while we got that three hours down to three minutes, you should plan another 20 to 30 minutes to tweak it, to go a little bit more in depth where it might be kind of high level and get it ready for your executive team and kind of the way they want. So still, we go from three hours down to 30 or 35 minutes. What an incredible use case for this technology. And I'm so excited to see what else it can do.